Joining me today on NYC Floor Talk is Carlos Vega. He is the co-founder and CEO at Tesorio. Carlos, it's great to have you here. Thanks for joining me yeah, today. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. pleasure. My pleasure. So now let's start off by talking about your company. Tell me about your company, Tesorio, and its mission. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting. So when you think back, like let's take a step back. Right now we're in a you know environment with like interest rates uh, you know higher than they used to be, uh, inflation on the rise. Uh, funding or access to funding is a little bit more difficult, and so in those that you know that environment, um, you know, being efficient with your cash and your cash flow is very important, obviously, right? And that's something that puts a lot of pressure on CFOs today. Um, and so, you know, what we do is basically help make companies optimize what we call cash flow performance, right? And you know, we refer to the problem as a cash flow disconnect, which means that like a lot of CFOs. And a lot of companies don't have visibility into all of the aspects that actually drive your cash flow and what you can do to hit the target that you have. Um, and like one small thing that's like kind of ironic that a lot of people don't think about is, you know, sales teams set a target and they have to hit that target, right? And everyone knows quota management and Salesforce exists and companies like Clary out there helping you make sure you get to where you're going. Cash flow is the same way. So it's an iterative process, right? Except in sales, you're a hero if you have a 30, 40% close rate, right? In things like collections and your accounts receivable, you better be batting a thousand, right? Otherwise you're leaving money on the table. And so those are all the processes that we get involved with, right? How do you make sure you get paid on time? We automate all of that. Then based on what came in, you know, who are your critical vendors that you have to make sure you pay, which are the ones that maybe you can pay a little bit later because money didn't come in as fast. And then how do you forecast everything? All of that's what we call cash flow performance. Um, and that's where we step in. So tell me now, what is your company doing in the realm of AI? When um, OpenAI put out a report last year, like, hey, what are some of the jobs that are going to be most susceptible to automation with AI? Right? One of the top ones was customer service. Right? And so you can imagine when you're a company and you're dealing with your customers to make sure that they pay you on time and, oh, my invoice was off or the PO number is missing or you have the wrong contact, anything like that, it's very similar to customer service. Right? And so our company, by automating those processes, we said, you know what? We can step in there too, and yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like, let's automatically generate the email. Let's automatically understand why, why it's off. Let's make sure we can respond with the right tone to this customer that actually usually pays on time, and they're just having an issue right now. Like, so uncovering all of that, that's like the first layer, right? And so now, what we're doing this year, and um, you know, figuring out is like, how can we automate a lot of those processes? How can we string it all together, right? So it's moving from automating the basic things, like writing an email to uh, crafting smart workflows. Share with me <laughs> your expectations and predictions for AI as we look ahead. You know, Microsoft recently launched what they call the, the Copilot Studio, right? Which allows anyone to create a Copilot for whatever you're trying to do. You know, they started off with customer service and, you know, different aspects in, in Outlook. Um, so think about the enterprise application space where there's Copilots for everything. Right? Are folks going to have to go to an application, click here and then do that and then automate that? Or are people going to say, I need to have $100 million by the end of the quarter, right? So they're going to have objectives that they're trying to work towards. Um, in order to make that happen and hit those objectives, what you're really going to get to is a point where surface to a co-pilot, that the objective that someone stated they want to accomplish should call a function from Tesorio if the, function ha if the objective has to do with getting paid on time. Right. And so uh, loosely what we talk about is that there's going to be a um, abstraction layer, if you will, from all of the actions that you typically do with a mouse on your computer screen, abstracted away into functions that can then be executed not by a human necessarily, but by a co-pilot or another, you know, non-human, you know, call it a computer, call it uh, AI, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so all, just to summarize, right, like the Enterprise applications today have a UI that we interact with, but we're going to have to add an abstraction layer that allows a non-human to be able to call the functions and interact with that application uh, the way that a human would. All right. Well, Carlos, wonderful to talk with you. Yeah. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk Excellent. today. Excellent. Thank you for having me.